The California Aqueduct delivers much of the water used in the state. It is cost effective to allow one third of the water to be lost en route, mostly through evaporation. The electrical power grids deliver virtually all of the electricity used nationwide. It is cost effective to allow one third of the power to be lost en route, mostly through resistive heating. Using the same cost-effective, loss-tolerant notion as the aqueducts and the power grid, the Aquarius low-cost launcher can achieve the low-cost launch of consumables needed in space by permitting about one-third of the launches to fail. The purpose of this video is to provide background to this cost-effective, loss-tolerant concept, which is new for the space business, but has stood the test of time for commodity delivery in other fields. About one-third of the launches are expected to fail, but this low-cost vehicle can be easily produced in excess quantities to compensate for losses without making the overall program cost high. In March 2002, DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, awarded a contract worth about $100 million to Boeing Corporation to build space hardware to demonstrate the ability to resupply orbiting spacecraft with fuel and equipment. In late 2002, NASA plans to award a number of study contracts to investigate novel means to resupply the International Space Station. Studies are underway at Boeing and its Space Systems Loral to investigate the usefulness of servicing commercial spacecraft in geosynchronous orbit. The Aquarius launch vehicle can serve these developing markets by providing a low-cost supply of consumables. These consumables, including water, food, air, fuel, duct tape, and other supplies, would cost little and be easy to replace. It would be illogical to launch $10,000 worth of easily replaced supplies using a $50 million rocket. Aquarius achieves a much lower cost of $1 to $2 million using a simple no-margin design involving lower grade parts and a minimal amount of testing. This strategy facilitates low cost with the consequence of reduced reliability, which is acceptable for the type of payloads that would be carried. Should a modest number of failures occur, the vehicle would not stand down until it was requalified, but would continue to be launched. The launch vehicle will be of a simple design with no redundancy. The use of existing facilities for handling the vehicle will be maximized. Technical studies indicate the feasibility of making Aquarius a single stage to orbit vehicle, or SSTO. This has the advantage of making use of a single main engine, a single set of propellant tanks, and a minimum parts count, thus holding costs to a minimum. Propellant tank analysis conducted by Microcosm and Wilson Composite Technologies, two California-based companies that are partners in this study, indicates that large, lightweight composite tanks can contain the cryogenic propellants required for this vehicle. Achieving a low tank mass is critical for the success of the Aquarius vehicle. The total launch cost is estimated to be on the order of one to two million dollars. The payload to orbit to be about one metric ton. This is nearly an order of magnitude below the launch cost for existing vehicles. As will be shown, a great deal of heritage already exists for the Aquarius concept. No development of risky or expensive new technology is expected. The water in which the vehicle is floating prior to launch serves as an indestructible launch pad. Unlike a land-based launching facility or a floating platform, the sea cannot be harmed by the vehicle, even if a serious failure occurs, and can be reused as frequently as desired. Relatively low-cost, low-tech barges can be used at sea to move Aquarius to its launch site. Floating launch therefore appears to be the best approach for Aquarius. Most of the test launches shown in this video were conducted under the U.S. Navy's Project Hydra. All of these floating launches were based in California. The state of California is home to virtually all U.S. floating launch research. This advantageous mid-Pacific launch position, far away from any landmass, is readily accessible from California. Sea Launch Corporation already makes use of a mid-Pacific position and uses Long Beach, California as its home port. 
towed barges permit low-cost transport and deployment of the launch vehicle. The barge shown here is 400 feet long and 100 feet wide. Such a barge can be towed at sea by a single ocean-going tugboat. Nearly 20 barges of this type are owned by Crowley Marine Services, which has its headquarters in Oakland, California. Barges in commercial use can be partially submerged at sea for short spans of time. This permits cargoes to be removed from the barge by floating them off. This method has been recommended for consideration by Crowley Marine Services.